Welcome to Laravel 5 Fundamentals, where we'll assume you've never used the framework before, but you're intrigued by it and want to dig in more. That's my job. However, I also understand that time is limited and we need to get into this stuff as quickly as possible. So don't worry, these videos aren't going to bore you to tears. We'll move fast enough to keep it interesting, but not too fast that you can't keep up with me. All right, so if you're ready, why don't we just dive in right now? Now, one of the best innovations in the PHP world in the last several years is the introduction of Composer, which is a dependency manager. In the past, we had to use really confusing tooling like Pair, which no one really understood how to use, or at the very least, nobody enjoyed using. But now, Composer makes the entire process infinitely easier. So what exactly does it do? Well, it gives us a nice way to reuse any kind of code. Rather than all of us reinventing the wheel over and over, we can instead very quickly download popular packages. And in fact, the Laravel framework itself pulls a couple dozen packages. So it makes great use of the PHP ecosystem. Now, if you're ever curious and want to browse through all of the offerings, you can visit packages.org. For example, maybe you're interested in authentication or something related to password handling. Or maybe you want to use a framework like Codeception or Bahad or PHP Spec. Any of these things are easily accessible through Composer. And in fact, that includes Laravel. This is what we want here. Now, we have a couple different ways to pull in Laravel. If you visit the Laravel documentation, you'll find a command line tool that allows you to do something like this. Laravel new my blog, and that's all you have to do. So it's really convenient. However, if you want to instead pull it in through Composer, here's how we can do it. The very first step is you have to get Composer on your machine. And as I just did, you can verify whether you have this by typing Composer. But chances are, if you've never heard this word before, you don't have it and you need to install it. So let's do that. Let's go back to Composer, to Download. And even though I have it, why don't we just pull it in again? So I will copy this, paste it in. Notice we are downloading the installer and piping that to PHP. Now you'll see that it added this composer.far file. If you've never seen that extension before, just think of it as a PHP specific archive. So if we wanted, we could do PHP and then type that in and there's composer. However, really, I'd prefer to just type composer anywhere on my machine and have it work. So to do that, I will move this composer.far file into a place that's globally accessible. For example, let's move composer.far to, on my Mac, user local bin. And I want to refer to it as simply composer. And that's it. So if you open a new tab, type composer, you should be all set to go. Now, that's how you take care of this on something like a Mac. For Windows users, I'm not gonna go into that too much just go to the documentation, introduction, and take a look at installation on Windows and follow those steps. It shouldn't be too different. So now let me give you a very quick rundown of how this works. We've actually covered Composer a great deal at Laracasts, so we won't go into too much detail, but I do wanna give you a quick one or two minute rundown. Let's make a temp project, just something to demonstrate this. Now I'm gonna require something that I need for this project I'm working on. It could be a test framework. It could be any kind of component that I don't want to manually write on my own. Instead, we'll let the community do the work for us. Why don't we just grab maybe a test framework like PHP spec? Well, all I have to do is type composer require PHP spec. Now, if you're wondering how I knew what to type here, well, if we go to that packages.org website and look for it, they'll give you instructions here. And generally for the packages you often use, you'll just begin to memorize it. So notice right here, this is what we need, the vendor name and the package name. And in this case, they just happen to be the same thing. So if we come back and run that, it's gonna download PHP spec so that I can use it in this specific project. Let's give that just a minute to download. Okay, with that done, what I want you to note here is that PHP spec itself has a number of dependencies that it requires. Things like Symfony slash YAML 
or Doctrine Instantiator, or Symphony's Finder package. Notice that for all of these various components, such as Symphony slash YAML, well, they already have a good package there for loading and parsing YAML files, so there's no need to reinvent the wheel. Instead, we just include that package into our project, and we can immediately make use of that functionality. All right, so now let's list the files, and you'll see here that we have a composer.json file. Think of this as a configuration file that specifies any packages that we're using. That way, if I give this project to somebody else, they can simply do a composer install to pull in everything that I've specified right here. Next, if we take a look at that vendor directory, any packages that we pull in through composer will be placed here. So notice we have PHP spec, but also we have some of the various dependencies that it requires. Next, you'll see a bin directory here. So if we take a look at that, any executables we might have by default will be placed there. So that means I could do vendor bin PHP spec, and now we have that. Pretty cool, right? Now, the only remaining thing that I want to touch on is the fact that Composer includes a very helpful autoloader out of the box. And this is what Laravel and really most projects these days make use of. In translation, by using Composer's autoloader, we can follow a basic convention which allows us to very easily import any, for example, PHP classes that we might need, rather than having to type require over and over and over. But don't worry, we'll dig into that quite a bit more in future lessons. For now, let's go back to my desktop and actually install Laravel. Now in this case, we're not actually requiring a package, we're creating a new project with Composer. So for that, we can use this command create project. Now, if we take a look, let's go back to Laravel. This is the one we want. And we can see that we pull in Laravel slash Laravel. Once again, the vendor and the package name just so happen to be the same. Okay, Laravel, Laravel. Next, we can specify a folder name to install this to. How about learning Laravel 5? And now, just on my end, I'm gonna specify that I want the develop branch. And that's because at the time of this recording, Laravel 5 is still a few weeks away from release. So on your end, you won't have to do this, but I do because I want the development branch, not the production branch, which is still set to Laravel 4. Okay, we run that, and we only have to give it maybe 30 seconds to download. Okay, so now it'll ask us if we want to remove the existing version control. Yes, we do. And we're good to go. So let's CD in there list the files, and we now have a fresh installation of Laravel. Now, we're gonna review what so many of these various files and folders are for, so don't immediately feel overwhelmed. We'll take it piece by piece. However, to finish up this video, why don't we boot up a quick server and take a look at Laravel's welcome page. Now, I already have PHP installed on my machine, so I'm gonna use its built-in server. We will access that on localhost port 8888. And we always want to set the document root to be Laravel's public directory. So the document root is the public folder. So let's run that. And there we go. If we now take a look at that, we see the nice and clean welcome page, which means Laravel 5 is all set to go. So if you've made it this far working along, congratulations, good job. However, it's also possible that when you were going through this process, something failed along the way. For example, a common failure relates to an extension called mcrit not being available. So if you see anything related to that, all that it's telling you is, hey, I need this extension in order to work, but your version of PHP doesn't include it. So you need to fix that. Now, if you happen to be using something like Linux, fixing this is a cinch. Just pull it in and be on your way. However, if you're on Mac or Windows and you're using some kind of all-in-one tool like WAMP or MAMP, and your version of that tool doesn't offer the encrypt extension, well, how are you supposed to deal with that? And that's when things get a little bit tricky. So in the next video, we're going to review an alternative approach using Laravel Homestead.